five million years ago in Africa. The earth was looking for a new ruler after the extinction of dinosaurs. Some apes had become bipedal and a fascinating story was taking shape. The genus Australopithecus was going to play an important role in the saga of human evolution. Hi friends, this is Akhilanan Singh. Welcome to the part 2 of the video series Hominins to Humans. In this part, we are going to study the genus Australopithecus. If you missed the part 1, I highly recommend you to check that out first. I'll be asking a fun question at the end of this video. If you watch the video carefully, you will get enough hint to answer it correctly. On your screen, you are seeing the syllabus of UPSC Anthropology Paper 1. This video series is going to fulfill the requirements of Topic 1.6. Let's jump on to the topic Australopithecus. Inside the order primates, the superfamily Hominoidea, the family Hominidae, and the subfamily Hominini, there is a tribe called Hominini. The tribe Hominini has several genera. Australopithecus is one of them which appeared in Africa between 4.2 and 1.9 million years ago. Important species under the genus Australopithecus are Australopithecus anamensis, Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus garhi, and Australopithecus sediba. The path of evolution doesn't follow a straight line. There are branches and dead ends as well. Between 16 to 12 million years ago, our ancestors diverged from the tribe of orangutans, Pongini. DNA match of 97.4% is a testimony to our old association with the Pongini tribe. Between 8 and 6 million years ago, there was another division. Our ancestors chose to take a different route than the members of the tribe Gorillini. Since we stayed together as late as 6 million years ago, we have a DNA match of 98.4% with gorillas. We got separated from chimpanzees some 6 to 4.5 million years ago. It means we and chimpanzees had a common ancestor between 6 and 4.5 million years ago. That's the reason why our DNA has 99% of resemblance with chimpanzees. Please note that in a saga of evolution, 4 or 6 million years is a very short period. You are seeing the hominini phylogeny on your screen. The genus Australopithecus is an archaic genus within the tribe Hominini. Looking from the top, you can realize that we Homo sapiens are phylogenetically closer to Neanderthals and Denisovans than Homo erectus. Australopithecus sediba is closer to us than Australopithecus africanus. And Australopithecus africanus is closer to us than Australopithecus afarensis. And similarly, Australopithecus afarensis is closer to us than the species of the genera Ardipithecus and Sahelanthropus. Let's see the timeline for the genus Australopithecus. They lived between 1.9 and 4.2 million years ago. Today, Homo sapiens are the only extant or living species on Earth. But in past, on several occasions, multiple species of humans have lived in parallel. For example, during their lifetime, Australopithecus coexisted with several species within their genus. They even shared this world with the species of the genus Paranthropus and the genus Homo. This slide shows the timeline of different species of the genus Australopithecus in blue color. The red color shows the timeline of Paranthropus species and the green color shows the timeline of different species within our genus Homo. Here you see another view of the genus Australopithecus timeline. The exact duration of time is shown for each of the species. Please note that all the Australopithecus species belong to the Pliocene and the Pleistocene epochs. You may also note down that the species Australopithecus anamensis appeared first, then came Australopithecus afarensis. Australopithecus afarensis coexisted with Australopithecus anamensis for some time. They also shared their geography in East Africa with Australopithecus africanus for some time. We do not know whether they knew about each other or if there was any communication between them. Australopithecus garhi lived for a relatively short period of time, roughly of 100,000 years. During their lifetime, the African land was also cohabited by Australopithecus africanus. Australopithecus sediba came last and they went extinct about 1.9 million years ago. Let's now have a closer look at all the Australopithecus species starting with the Australopithecus anamensis. Australopithecus anamensis is the earliest known species within the genus Australopithecus. Its name is derived from the word anam in the Turkana language, it means lake. Australopithecus anamensis coexisted with Australopithecus afarensis for about 100,000 years. 
it had both ape and human characteristics. Anamensis might be a direct ancestor of humans, but this lineage is debated. It is a direct ancestor of the later species of Australopithecus and Paranthropus genus. The environment where Australopithecus anamensis lived was a closed woodland surrounding the lake Turkana in Kenya. And it is on the basis of this lake, its name Australopithecus anamensis is given. In the previous slide, we have already talked about the timeline of Australopithecus anamensis. Appearance-wise, it had a flat nose, prominent proreses, and a long jaw. Its canine teeth were pointed. It had some bipedal walking capabilities, though it was a quadrupedal knuckle walker, ape human species. It had a small brain of 370 cubic centimeter. Let's talk about its fossil discovery. In 1965, Meve Leakey and Ellen Walker discovered some lower jaw bones, femurs, skull fragments near the Lake Turkana in Kenya. Some more fossils were found in the later years. In 2019, a nearly intact skull was discovered. Australopithecus afarensis. The word afarensis is derived from the name of the region Afar in Ethiopia, East Africa. Afarensis fossils were discovered at the Hadar fossil site in the Afar region. Australopithecus afarensis lived between 2.9 and 3.9 million years. Australopithecus afarensis is one of the best known early human species. The famous archaic human Lucy belongs to this species. It is considered to be a direct ancestor of modern humans. The later species of Australopithecus and Paranthropus are considered to have derived from Australopithecus afarensis. Appearance-wise, it has a low sloping forehead, a projecting face with prominent brodises. It is supposed to be less than 5 feet tall with a 40 kg weight. Its brain was of 450 cubic centimeters, which is only 1.3% of the body weight. In comparison, our brain is 2% of the body weight. Its canine teeth were pointed and were longer than the other teeth. Australopithecus afarensis was a plant, fruit, seeds and nuts eater. It also ate insects and small animals. It was mostly bipedal. Australopithecus fossils were discovered in 1974 by Donald Johnson and Mary Leakey at the Hadar site. In 1924, Raymond Dart discovered the fossils of Australopithecus africanus in Tong area in South Africa. At that time, it was the first ever fossil discovery of ancient humans in Africa. Hence, it was named Australopithecus africanus. Africanus had a rounder cranium housing a larger brain of 475 cubic centimeter. Africanus teeth were more human-like, but it had a projecting jaw, sloping face and a flat nose similar to apes. It was bipedal but was also adapted to climbing trees. It ate mostly plant-based diet consisting of leaves, fruits, seeds and nuts. It also consumed insects and small vertebrates. At the time of its fossil discovery, some skull and teeth fragments were recovered. The fossil skull was of a child which is known as a tongue child among the spots. It was once considered a direct ancestor of humans but now this idea is challenged. Australopithecus garhi Australopithecus garhi lived between 2.6 and 2.5 million years ago in the Afar region in East Africa. Garhi means surprise in Afar language. Scientists found some of the features of its skull including the enormous back teeth surprising. Hence this name was given. Perhaps garhi was the oldest ancient human to use stone tools, though the tools were primitive. It had pronounced snout and long arms similar to apes but its legs were longer, similar to humans. Its brain capacity was 450 cubic centimeter. It stood 4 feet 11 inches tall, weighing only 35 kgs. Though its primary diet was plant-based, it ate meat too. Australopithecus garhi fossils were discovered in 1990 in the Afar region of East Africa. Australopithecus sediba Australopithecus sediba lived between 1.9 to 2 million years ago in Malapa, South Africa. Its fossils were discovered in Malapa cave in the year 2008 by Matthew Berger and Lee Berger. Surprisingly, the major portion of the skeleton was intact when it was recovered. The other pieces of fossil included pelvis, hand and collar bone. Sediba means fountain or natural spring in Sesotho language. Its brain case was 420 to 440 cubic centimeter. Many features of Australopithecus sediba suggest it had a close relationship with Australopithecus africanus. 
some morphological characteristics have close similarity with the species in the genus Homo. Sediba's hands were very evolved and it had a long thumb like modern humans. It had pronounced brow ridges and snout. On your screen, you are seeing the full skeleton of Sediba kept in an African museum. You can also spot the location where the fossils were found in the South African region. We have reached the end of this video. The great saga of human evolution will continue in the next video wherein we will talk about Kenyan Thropus and Paranthropus. It's the time for the fun question. Please pause the video to read the question. Put your answers in comment. See you in the next video. Bye.